Iran appears to be standing down. The U.S. and Iran both trying to turn down the heat on escalating tensions in the Middle East. What action the U.S. may be taking next off the battlefield? A local father learning how long he will spend behind bars for starting a fire that claimed the lives of his children. And the suspects arrested in the murder of a homeless shelter security guard. 10 News Midday starts now. Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. This morning, leaders from the U.S. and Iran indicating they want to de-escalate the tension after this video showing Iranian missiles being fired at Iraqi bases housing U.S. troops. I'm Virginia Shaw. And I'm Jim Patton. No troops were hurt. Iran saying it was a retaliation, but today President Trump suggesting the U.S. may retaliate economically. ABC's Rachel Scott has more. This morning, President Trump addressing the nation with his national security team by his side, responding to that counterattack by Iran. Iran appears to be standing down, which is a good thing for all parties concerned and a very good thing for the world. The president saying as the U.S. continues to weigh its options Under in response to Iran's aggression, additional economic sanctions will go into effect. The fact that we have this great military and equipment, however, does not mean we have to use it. We do not want to use it. American strength, both military and economic, is the best deterrent. Overnight, the United States assessing the damage at two military bases in Iraq where American troops were stationed, targeted by Iran in a revenge attack. This video by Iranian state TV reportedly showing missiles aimed at one of the bases, the regime bearing its top commander, Qasem Soleimani, hours after the country launched several ballistic missiles in response to his death. This morning, 30 miles from Erbil, the capital of Kurdish Iraq, local security forces removing fragments from what they say was an intercepted missile that landed there. There have been no reports of U.S. coalition or Iraqi casualties. The Iraqi government saying Iran alerted them prior to the attack. Iran defiant, but adamant they do not want war. The Iranian foreign minister tweeting, we do not seek escalation or war, but will defend ourselves against any aggression. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei calling the strike a slap in the face to the U.S., demanding President Trump pull all American forces out of the region. And sources tell ABC News that American troops were in bunkers at the time of the attack, a sign that there may have been enough of a warning of possible danger. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Washington. And despite the suggestion that a de-escalation is happening, some members of our Middle Eastern community are gathering right now to denounce U.S. involvement in Iran. 10 News anchor Mary McKenzie joins us live in Balboa Park. And Mary, the group says they don't trust the president's words. And this is a coalition, Jim, a broad coalition, human rights leaders. You have faith leaders out here. It's kind of disbanding at the moment, as you see behind me here. But they're protesting American involvement in Iran. We asked them if the tone has changed now, that it sounds like there is this de-escalation of the threat of war with Iran. And one organizer essentially said no. This isn't just about one action that the that President Trump has done. This is about a series of uh, horrible um, decisions he has made. The groups here today include the National Iranian American Council, the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, the Jewish Voice for Peace, a Unitarian group, members of the Muslim and Jewish communities, a Veterans for Peace group. So it is a broad range. They call President Trump's actions Friday irresponsible, saying they believe he's destabilized the Middle East and endangered the lives of Americans despite the shift of language today. One major concern they have, too, is the detaining of Iranian Americans crossing the border from Vancouver into Washington over the weekend. Immigrant advocates, lawyers fearing that these groups are now being targeted. Meshgan Afshan, who is Afghan American, feels like this is deja vu to 2001 when we went to war in Afghanistan. Because it's been uh, like, you know, flashbacks of that time 19 years ago. And then again in 2003 when we went to war with Iraq. Uh, there are additional rallies planned. One is happening this evening. Some of these groups will be involved in that, as well as some other groups. That's at 6 o'clock tonight in the park as well at Park and President's Way. We're live in Balboa Park. Mary McKenzie, 10 News. Thank you, Mary. Now to the other big story out of Iran this morning. Investigators scouring the scene of the site of a commercial plane crash that killed all 176 people on board. It happened minutes after a Ukraine Airlines plane took off from Tehran for Kyiv. Now, according to the website Flight Radar 
24, the plane stopped transmitting data at about 8,000 feet. It was a 737, but not a 737 MAX. The cause of the crash, of course, is under investigation. Boeing looking into it as well. Representatives for Ukraine International Airlines say the crew was led by experienced pilots. Outbursts in the courtroom, tears and biting words. This during the sentencing of a man accused of falling asleep drunk with a lit cigarette, the resulting fire killing his two children. 10 News reporter Cassie Carlisle live at the courthouse downtown. And Cassie, his wife, I understand, just finished her statement minutes ago. She did finish her statement about 20 minutes ago, but we have another reporter up in the courtroom right now, and she's listening to the defense. He just said that he wants no leniency. He wants to apologize to his wife, and he also talked about how much he loved his kids. But let's show you what it looked like in there when Nakia Lopez was speaking. Uh, she went from, she talked for about an hour. She went from moments of silence to moments of yelling at her ex-husband. There were heated moments as well. She painted Henry Lopez as an abusive husband who cheated on her and was an alcoholic. She said shed tears as she talked about her children, saying she won't be able to do any of her favorite routines, taking them to school, going shopping for them, and making them lunch. I go crazy at 2.30 each day because I cannot go and get my kids from school like any other normal mom. This all stemming back to October 28, 2017. A house fire killed her 10 year old son Christos and their seven year old daughter Isabella. Now he was convicted last year on charges including involuntary manslaughter and he is continuing to speak now. Now the uh, the longest sentence he could get is 17 years, but it sounds like the judge wants to take about 15 years. Reporting live downtown, Cassie Carlisle, 10 News. All right, Cassie, thank you. Well, we have an update on the Alpha Project security guard who was shot and killed while returning from a break. San Diego police say they have arrested two men, one in Phoenix on Saturday, a week after Ernie Buchanan was killed, the other in San Diego Monday. Now, police have identified the men as Floyd Garrett and Johnny Hill. Both are in their 40s and from San Diego. Police say video from nearby smart streetlights helped them track the men down. But police have not said why Buchanan was shot outside the bridge shelter on Imperial Avenue. These arrests are coming as Buchanan's family prepares for his funeral. The Alpha Project says they will be covering those expenses. The services are scheduled for this weekend. One teenager is dead and five others injured after a crash on State Route 905 late last night. Our 10 News breaking news tracker was on scene near Byer Boulevard. Officers say that the car was going west on the 905 at high speed when it hit the center divide. Police say the driver died on scene. The other teens had to be rescued from the wreckage. They are being treated for unknown injuries. Firefighters had their hands full after several RVs and cars burst into flames at a storage yard in Otay Mesa. It took crews several hours to get a handle on the fire because the items burning in the storage and junkyards in that area were hard to extinguish. At least two RVs and a couple of cars were scorched. Border Patrol agents were the first to spot that fire last night. They called Cal Fire. Now investigators are trying to figure out the cause, but no one was hurt. Deputies searching for three robbers who held up an unlicensed marijuana dispensary in Rainbow. The employees reported the thieves held them at gunpoint. Security guard tried to fight them off. One of the robbers was shot in that altercation, but all three did get away. Hospitals have been told to look out for a patient with a gunshot wound. Deputies also took all of the product from that dispensary. Happening today, we are going to be hearing from San Diego State about the future of Aztecs football and head coach Rocky Long. Now, the nature of today's news conference has not been made clear, but it does come on the heels of reports that Long is looking at coordinator jobs elsewhere. Rocky Long took over as head coach of the Aztecs in 2011. Since then, their record is 81 and 38.